I'll be in Florida. <sighs> so this is a webinar, okay? Okay, I think we're I think we're live, streaming live on Facebook. We're ready to rock and roll. It looks like, so we'll give it one second. Okay, we're live. Here we go. Hey, brothers, this is Ben Robinson and uh, Rob Cadill's on the split screen with us. Rob, Rob, how's everybody in your household doing? Everybody's doing healthy and we're all well. I appreciate you asking, Ben. That's good. You know, uh, this morning we had a chance to talk to <laughs> a lot of brothers this morning, which has been a lot of fun. Some of them from my chapter, uh, yep. and some from uh, brothers that have uh, touched base with us in some way, shape, or form. And so it's kind of nice to start off this uh, Founders Day, you know, celebrating our 172nd birthday, mm -hmm. which is amazing if you really think about that time span. That's great. No, and uh, great. so for brothers that are watching or going to be watching or looking at this later today, uh, what Rob and I wanted to be able to do is really uh, to spend some time and share with brothers a snapshot of mm -hmm. what, uh, what's going on in Phi Gamma Delta uh, and, and also some things that are not going on just simply because of the times that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. um, and really to also to talk about some of the things that the fraternity is thinking about, some of the plans that they're making and, and, and really give you a snapshot of what's happening uh, within Phi Gamma Delta. And so, so for Rob, let's start off this morning. Tell me, uh, tell me about one or two of the phone calls you've had today with brothers just catching up, if you will. Sure. Well, it, it's been good. You know, it, it gives us a good excuse just to, to make those reach outs. Um, so one, one of the first calls I had this morning was with a, a great brother who I, I respect very much, uh, Mark Smith. It's a Texas Arlington brother and, and former Archon. Uh, and Mark and I catch up every, every now and then, but this was a, a good reason to do so. And you know, we're, we're both are, we're fortunate that our, our families are doing well. Um, we're, you know, also looking to the future and seeing what comes next for us all, but it was just a good, a good to catch up, good conversation. But yeah, I, I in, in a short period of time, I've, I've had a chance to be with about 10 different brothers today, uh, either just kind of chapter, chapter brothers I'm catching up with or uh, calling some brothers who've been very generous to us already today as well. So it's, it's good to hear that the five game spirit is, is very strong today. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, so our challenge, so our challenge out there today, brothers, is uh, for, for you to call other brothers and really just uh, maybe reminisce, catch up, check up on each other, you know, in this time of COVID-19 that we really touch base just to make sure we're doing okay. And so our challenge is for so all, of, all the brothers on staff for, you know, and within the Arcanet and the Foundation Board is to call five brothers and then in, encourage them and challenge them to call five of their their brothers or friends and really just to touch base and so hopefully later today we'll kind of have some numbers of what that might look like uh, we repurposed today uh, you know in the past we called this giving day but because of everything going on you know instead of focusing on giving simply because times are times are kind of crazy we wanted to focus on brotherhood and and you know we, we, we made a lot of changes within three weeks from giving day to, to day of brotherhood. And it's kind of, it's been very refreshing as we were building up and, and kind of preparing for today. Some of the things that we were looking at that reminded us of brotherhood, reminded us of our founders and reminded us maybe of some challenges in the past that we've been through. So in a lot of ways, it's been very refreshing. And so, hey, Rob, why don't we start out this morning, kind of get to our topic, sure. um, you know, Everything was rolling along in March, and then boom, you know, the world kind of hit the brick wall. Same thing for Phi Gamma Delta. I mean, every organization's kind of going through, kind of going through the stop. Uh, can you kind of open us up a little bit, with the, just sharing with us what, uh, kind of what the impact or what's happening in Phi Gamma Delta, maybe starting with our chapters, just what's happening or not happening with our chapters. If, if you want to start there, that'd be a good place, I think. Well, well Ben, I will, but, but first, I, I need to get two quick plucks, all right? Uh, just some, some housekeeping things. So, brothers, uh, first of all, I think uh, Ben and I are, are obviously going to give some updates here, but we, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your, your, your questions. So, whether you're joining us via, via the Zoom webinar, you can submit questions there. Or if you're joining us on Facebook Live, just a reminder to, to plug some questions in there. The staff is going to feed those to us. We're going to get to those a little bit later. The, the other thing I'll mention, brothers, I mean, I, 
I found it very refreshing to really be thinking about uh, friendship today. And um, I think we think about friendship really as the basis of, of who we are. And I, I call it the foundation uh, of, of who we are as five games. But uh, as, you, as you celebrate brotherhood today, I, I, I need to ask you something. And that's, that, that's to help and, and consider a gift to support the fraternity. So not to, uh, not to take from, from my, my educational foundation friends, but just a plug here. Uh, brothers, you might have seen there's a challenge out there for the next hour that any brother who makes a donation directly to the fraternity, the international fraternity, via our page at phigam.org slash brotherhood, uh, that gift will be matched. So you, you can double that gift uh, if you make it directly to the fraternity over the next hour. So I, I hope you will consider that gift and help support Phigam and Delta. Yeah, and Rob, I plan, on, I plan on making a gift during this hour for that very purpose, just to direct dollars to, to the fraternity. So uh, well, thanks for that reminder. That's great. I'm going to hold you to that, Ben. Good. All right. Um, but Ben, you asked a question, just how, how are things going, right? How are things going? Um, but I, th I think as we can all imagine, every, every one of our chapters, every single one of our undergraduate chapters has been impacted uh, by this, by this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it didn't all happen at once, uh, but I think it happened very quickly. As we think back to March, and I think, Ben, you can remember there's just a lot of Every hour, there was new information in the office, and we're trying to figure out which way is up and what's going on. But ultimately, uh, every one of our chapters uh, effectively had to, had to change the way it was operating. Uh, every, every one of our host institutions uh, stopped its in-person classes. Most of our host institutions uh, essentially got students off of campus, which put, which put our undergraduates in very unfamiliar territory. Sure. Um, so you know, chapters had to adapt very quickly, but uh, the, the thing I will say um, primarily here is I'm very proud of, of our brothers. I'm very proud of, of everything uh, that we saw happen so quickly. Our, our chapters, our colonies, and their graduate brothers did, you know, did a great job supporting them, made very quick changes and adaptations, and it became very clear to me uh, that really that, that basis of, of brotherhood, that, that friendship was, was going to keep us going through this. So, uh, you know, how, how did it work? Uh, there were a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of quick adaptations to using technology. You know, a lot of undergraduates are pretty adept at this already, right? They're, they're talking like this already, right? They're, they're doing this already, but you, we certainly saw a lot more. But I think what we started to hear more and more is, is brothers are doing a good job checking in on each other. Um, maybe not as many chapters doing you know, the normal, you know, formal meetings as, as we would like to see, but I, I think overall chapters have been doing a good job uh, catching up with, with one another. Uh, they're, they're doing that via Zoom, they're doing that via uh, Facebook, they're doing that via Google Hangouts, you name it, all sorts of things I've never even heard of. Uh, but they're, they're doing it, and, and I think we, we, we really appreciate seeing that, because that's been our push. You know, from, from a staff end, we had to make some quick pivots as well. Uh, for those that know the field story position, imagine doing that position in, uh, where you're not able to travel, right? right. Um, so, you know, so very quickly, it's just, just one example. Um, all, all those men were, were off the road and they were stationed in Lexington. So very quickly, we did some pivoting on the staff as well, recognizing that chapters are going to need support. Uh, our brothers are going to need support. We had to find a way to offer it to them. So we've been, uh, you know, we've been continuing to kind of see what happens next and, and make those plans. Uh, I think brothers have probably noticed a lot more activity from us in the way of virtual communication, town halls, webinars, a lot of information being pushed out, hopefully not too much. Uh, but uh, Really, I think we, we find that we need to make sure that our brothers have what they need to, to keep their chapters going because that's the expectation. Uh, we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, we're, you know, we keep monitoring what's going on. And, and I think, you know, my, my, my take home message to brothers is we're going to weather this storm, right? Um, our chapters can and will survive and, and hopefully thrive. Um, uh, so I, I, I think we, we've got to keep that in mind and we just need to make some adaptations. So as we look to the fall, that's where, that's where our, our, our eyes are next. Uh, that's what staff is looking at next and to say, uh, what, what could we expect? And I think we expect an array of different scenarios that we're going to have to help our chapters deal with, and, and we're preparing for that. So we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about more of those details throughout, throughout the day. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do want to comment um, as, as we were having, as everybody was having kind of a just on the fly, uh, I do agree that, you know, just watching our undergraduate brothers, you know, be as creative as they can be. And I think sometimes I forget that, you know, when we were in college, we could be creative, maybe a little too creative, <laughs> but, but it's that, you know, but that's, you know, that's, that's extremely important there in these times that everybody says, okay, let's put some, let's put our best thinking together and not, and not say, oh, we can't do that because we've never done it, but say, hey, well, no, let's try it. And we're going to learn something. And I think that's a, 
you know, right now that's probably one of the best messages that we can send to everybody is that, you know, things are, we may be doing things a little differently, but it could be very good for us to even go through that thought process. So I'm glad the fraternity's doing it. I know, I know y'all been busy. I know that y'all been very busy <laughs> as you're planning. There was a, there was a point in time when things changed, I guess, literally they were changing every hour and, you know, we were trying to make, uh, trying to make decisions as, as those things were happening. So very proud of the fraternity and what it's doing. So we've got our chapters that are kind of, you know, operating in a completely different mode, kind of, I'm not going to say that they're closed because they're not closed. No, I mean, our not. chapters, they're not closed. Are, they're not closed. They are in operational mode. And I do want to get to that in a minute, but also let's talk a little bit about the headquarters operation because, you know, the, the office is closed, not, I mean, we're in business, but the building is really kind of shut down in the sense that the governor's asked, you know, ask us not to come into work. So, Tell us a little bit about what's happening with, uh, with the staff and how we're reaching out to uh, our chapters and that kind of thing and what's going on with uh, the headquarters operation. Well, yes, yeah, so, I mean, and Ben, as, as you started to say, um, I think it's been about six, maybe seven weeks now uh, that we've effectively shut the, shut the, uh, the, headquarters, up, the headquarters down in terms of working, working out in person. Uh, fortunately, the majority of our staff is, is well positioned to work from wherever. But, you know, a, lot, a lot of us do a lot of travel anyway, so we're used to working from wherever. Uh, so for most of our staff, that was not that big of an adjustment. But I think just for all brothers to be aware, um, we, are, we are not permitted to have our staff in the building right now, right? I mean, I, I think you, you can tell by Ben's background that he, he's working there. He's, he's the only one in the building. And uh, we, we've been purposely limiting that uh, out of respect to uh, what we're being asked to do and advised to do uh, here locally. And that, that's the first thing we've all got to keep in mind is, is for the health and safety of others, what are the things we need to be doing and how can we do things differently? So... That meant that we're, we're shifting people. Uh, again, every, everybody's working from home. And that even means that we are, we're bouncing off a satellite so that when you call 859-255-1848, someone is still answering the phone and directing your call. The only weird thing about it is it might take a few other extra seconds while it goes from uh, our office to a cell phone, back to the office to a cell phone, and we're, we're just bouncing things around. But finding ways to adapt, right? We're finding ways to adapt. Um, and we're gonna continue that way for a while. You know, here in Kentucky, uh, things are starting to ease just a little bit. It's a real slow opening, uh, but it, it's not going to be full bore. And I, I don't intend to, to reopen the office full bore either. We're going to continue working remotely for, for some period of time. I think as we can ease folks back in to get a little bit more productive, we're going to do that. But we're going to make those adjustments. Um, you know, as, as we look into the, the, the future, into the summer and fall, we, we might have other adjustments. Uh, you may not see the same level of travel. Uh, from the fraternity staff at, at, just out of necessity uh, but we're going to continue to do everything we can to support our chapters no matter the situation we're in um, and, and, uh, and, and find ways to work around our normal modes of operation. Yeah I was uh, I was talking to some of the directors over the last week and uh, you know so you know working on recruitment and chapter support and, and educational operations uh, or educational programs um, you know, how all of them, all of them were staying really busy just talking, talking to individual officers or chapter members or, or whoever they're, you know, working directly with. Um, but as I mentioned earlier that, you know, our chapters are still, there's still things administratively that our chapters are having to do while, while <clears throat> initiations or things like that may not be taking place. There's still a lot of the kind of end of the year chapter operations that they still have to kind of take care of remotely. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's, there's been a lot of activity through, from those directors just constantly in, in the communication that I've had, which is good. I mean, I think that's, um, you know, that it can be very helpful to our undergraduates keeping that line of communication open uh, so the business can, can still be conducted. Because I know for example, on the foundation side, you know, we're still issuing scholarships. We're still, you know, issuing triple A's, chapter scholarships, or doing housing grants, and even grants to the fraternity. I mean, all that's still happening, um, uh, actually, like it normally would. And so it's kind of, it is kind of interesting to be doing it uh, remotely and then having everybody trying to communicate back and forth. So yeah, you're right. It might take a little bit longer for us to do it, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it done. Probably the, the thing that's most impact is if you send us something in the mail, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But, but that's true. beyond that, I mean, beyond that, I think we're able to, to keep our operations pretty, pretty smoothly. So I'm, uh, you know, through this wonderful thing of technology, I can see questions that are coming up from somebody sending me a chat. So one of the things 
It says uh, that I'm going to encourage brothers that uh, if you're watching on Facebook, you can submit questions via chat. And those watching on Zoom, uh, you can submit uh, questions via the Q&A feature down at the bottom of the, down the, bottom of the page. So um, uh, there's a question coming up that we're going to get to that one in just a minute. But, you know, so, so we've got chapter operations in our field, you know, our field secretaries who are a big piece of our undergraduate operation as they can continue to communicate or doing the exact same thing. And they're, I think they're, they're scattered back home, most of them now. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, you know, field stories, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, when everything started to happen back in March, the field stories were all back in the office as a planned uh, week, week back in the office. We, we scheduled those from time to time to get ready back together. Uh, so when it, when it first started happening, we just, we grounded everybody and said, well, we're just gonna keep working here for a little bit. And then that just continued to evolve. So. Chapters probably heard a lot more from their field series than they normally do, uh, wh whether they liked it or not, right? But that, that was the idea to, to provide additional layer of support. But as time it has gone on, uh, we, we did allow, and, and most, most of the field series took us up on that to uh, kind of scatter from Lexington and, and in most cases go back to their, their permanent homes, uh, their parents' homes, uh, just to have a, a little bit more breathing room, if, if you will, uh, and have a little, little bit more opportunity to properly distance from one another. Let's, uh, hey Rob, let's talk about uh, what's, you know, there are a lot of things that we had planned. The summer, the summers usually can be really busy for us. And so we know that, that uh, there've been activities that we've had to cancel, but let's just kind of run through for everybody, some of the cancellations and, and, you know, and let's get to the question about the Ecclesia, what we think sure. may or may happen there. Cause that's one of the questions that came up from Brian Price. Hey Brian, hope you're doing well. So let's, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that the, the summer's been kind of shifted, changed, or closed for, for uh, this sure. summer. Well, I mean, even just backing up a little bit, man, I mean, look, let's just acknowledge and recognize that a lot, a lot of chapters have those impacts as well. So, I mean, you, you think about how many big dinners we typically see in between late March and into April. If I had to guess, 60% of our chapters uh, have a big dinner in that four to five week period, right? Um, those were all pretty well just postponed. Uh, uh, Some outright cancel, most postponed. Uh, a lot of a lot of creativity and brothers uh, going around to do, do these virtual big dinners as well. So we're going to try our hand at that tonight as well, right? Right. Um, so I, I think we need to recognize that a lot of chapters having other other normal philanthropic events and social events that had to be had to be pushed. Uh, so it, it's a big adjustment. You know, in that same vein, you know, there are big inter international training programs that typically happen at the summer that did not. Uh, I think it was, was it five or six years ago, we started with the Institute, uh, an, an immersive leadership program uh, that now is up to, to two summer sessions, brings about 200 people in over the course of, of those two sessions, uh, happens here in Kentucky, that those had to be, those had to be canceled. Uh, we did not feel there was any way to do those safely. Uh, and, and looking back, I'm, I'm glad that we did, uh, just again, for the safety, for the safety of our brothers, right? Uh, typically at the end of June, we also have what's known as the summit a training opportunity uh, for recruitment chairman and new member educators. And again, we had to, to adjust how we're doing that. We didn't feel comfortable uh, bringing brothers here to, to Kentucky. Uh, and so what we're doing is we, we've adjusted that. And actually that kicks off tonight in a virtual series. Rather than a, a weekend long educational session, uh, brothers will see a summer long uh, series of, of educational programming geared around chapter recruitment and new member education. So. If, uh, if you've not picked up on that, if you're not signed up for that yet, uh, kick off, uh, the kickoff for that series is, is later today. And, and Jake's, Jake's going to be angry with me. I don't remember exactly what time, but it's later today. So look at the schedule. It's 6 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6 o'clock. So 6 o'clock. And uh, I think uh, tonight, tonight joining us, we'll, we'll bring a lot of expo outside, outside experts in to help us walk through this. Uh, but joining us tonight is, is a former staff member, Matt Farrell, uh, who, who's going to help us uh, uh, walk through some, some things we need to consider for recruitment uh, moving forward. And then, of course, you know, the, the big question is, is well, I should back up. There, there was another, not maybe big as in size, but big as in, um, uh, as, as in important, certainly, in that we were supposed to have an, an Archons meeting in Houston uh, just this past weekend. Um, as you might expect, we, we could not go to Houston, which we were very disappointed by. The, the Houston graduate chapter was well poised to show some fantastic hospitality to the Archons when they were visiting. Um, but unfortunately, we did have to cancel that, and we had a day and a half long meeting via Zoom. Uh, this past weekend. So I appreciate the, the endurance of the Archons uh, to, to do that one. Uh, but those are the adjustments you make. So to Brian, and again, um, Brian, good to, good to hear from you. Um, hope you are, hope you and your family are doing well. Enjoy watching, watching your family uh, on social media. Um, to the Ecclesia, that's everyone's big question. We are, we are scheduled to have the 172nd Ecclesia in Phoenix this August. 
Uh, the answer is we don't know yet. We, we don't know yet. We want to wait as long as we can to have as much information as we can to, to make a decision on how we're going to proceed with the ecclesia. Uh, I, I will tell you that we, we, we will certainly not be having the ecclesia as we normally do. That, that, that's, we, we know that's not going to happen. Uh, the couple of things that we're, we're exploring and, and looking at, and again, we're just waiting to have as much information as we can before we make this decision. Um, we may go forward with an in-person ecclesia in August, uh, but a very reduced version, a, very, a version that focuses on, on the business sessions only, probably does some work uh, in advance with, with committees, and, and probably limits, well, certainly limits the brothers that are there, even down to the required delegates. Uh, that's out of a, a, a concern for health and safety and just the unknown of, of what we need to be doing more than two months from now, but, but also uh, very sensitive to, to the cost of those events and how can we, how can we bring that in in a new way. Uh, the, the next option would be looking at the possibility of a virtual ecclesia. Um, we're, we're exploring those, those avenues and, and the platforms that we would need to have in place in order to hold the business, again, focus on the business of the fraternity uh, in order for the ecclesia body to uh, elect archons, to pass a budget, and to bend our laws. Those are, some, those are some of the core things that we know we need to get done. We, we feel like we could get those done virtually, but we, we know the brothers, uh, I think, tend to like to be with each other when they can, and, and we just want to see what the best option is going to look like. The, the third could be a delay. Uh, there is no, no law on our books that says the ecclesia has to be in the summertime, right? Uh, the ecclesia may be called uh, by the archons or the, or the, the previous ecclesia, and so certainly uh, one consideration is, is delaying that potentially as late as, as into January in the traditional PG Academy time. There's all sorts of complications and considerations with all those. So I, I, I'm just telling you brothers, here's some of the things that we're thinking. Uh, we will probably make a decision uh, by, by mid to late May. Uh, I, 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 don't know, I don't know that we're gonna have anything ready to announce before late May, uh, but that's, that's what we're aiming for. We ask brothers to keep holding the dates for us, but, but certainly don't book any travel. Yeah, and that's such a, you know, I think every every fraternity that's going to hold their convention this year is kind of in that same boat. And so there are a lot of moving parts to making that decision. So I know I know it's something that y'all, you probably think about every day as you're going into the summer, you know, as you're going into the summertime. Um, but thanks for that update. You know, as we, as we think about, once we get through the summer, you know, I think one of the, one of the big questions out there is is thinking about you know i think that the 600 billion dollar question i think is is uh our school's going to be coming back you know our, our campus is going to be operating in the fall and uh you know, there was an article in the wall street journal just yesterday about this exact same thing and it probably shows up in every paper at least once a week um can you kind of share a little bit about uh <clears throat> what what you're seeing or thinking or hearing about the fall and just kind of how we're even approaching that, knowing that that also changes probably every week um, as, we're look, as we look to the beginning of this, what we call the school year. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's the new piece that changes every hour, right? Yes. Um, I, I, I think we're, we're gonna go into the summer and, and it's a planning for the fall, knowing that we are probably gonna be facing a, a lot of scenarios all at once. Okay, I, I think that, that's first and foremost. I don't expect that every higher education institution is going to do the exact same thing. And so I think we're, we're going to have to be in a position where we are prepared to help our chapters, regardless of the circumstance. And they're, they're probably going to fall in one to a couple of buckets. And, and I'll back this up and say, I'm not just making this up. Okay. <laughs> we've been, we've certainly been talking with, with folks at, at the interfraternal level. Uh, our trade association, the NIC has been highly engaged in helping us all uh, consider and plan for those things we, we might think about. Um, and we've been looking, looking at and ha having the experts uh, give us some guidance as well. And, and, and in fact, even having some, some experts with us just last week at the Archons meeting uh, to, give, to give them some, some background and guidance. But I, I think what's, what's most likely ha to happen, Ben, is I think uh, schools have already kind of given that indicator. We've seen a lot more in the last couple of days where schools have given that indicator that they plan to go into the fall with students on campus, right? That's, that's the plan. Now, and everyone is prefacing that by saying, uh, is, as long as it's safe to do so. Right. Right. The, the hope is certainly, and, and I think what, what everyone is starting to see is that it, it seems to be a likely scenario that we might be able to have students on, on campus, which I think they, our, our higher education uh, partners really uh, have, feel a need to try and, and make that happen if at all possible. 
uh, it was a very it was, it was a very abrupt shift to online classes this this past spring. For the most part, students don't seem to appreciate online classes nearly as much, right? So I think there, there is an interest from higher education to try and, and make that shift as, as best they can. I, I, I don't think there would be any campuses or be very few campuses that are just, that are just back as, as normal. I, I just, I don't think that that's what we're going to see. Most of what we're gonna see is probably more of a hybrid model. I think most of the cases where students are likely back on campuses, but it's gonna look a little different. Those large events uh, could be canceled or limited. So the, you know, the impacts to fraternity could, could come into play when you think about typical approaches in recruitment and social events and philanthropic events. And there's gonna be some shifts and adjustments uh, based on what's going on state by state, uh, city by city, campus by campus. Um, I think there, there's a lot of consideration. Generally speaking, the, the college age population is not at a huge health risk. That, that's generally what, what people are thinking and saying, right? Generally speaking, young, young people who, are, who were, were healthy previously generally don't have the same uh, impact from, from COVID, health impact that, that others might. So it's not necessarily that college population, but it's, it's all the others. It, it's, the, it's the college university staff and faculty members. Uh, it's the surrounding community and all those that, that, that community spread that, that everybody talks about. That's, that's where a lot of concerns lie. So I think you might see, from an acad academic perspective, you might see where you might have had a three or four or 500 person lecture that, that could go to a 500 or to a, a virtual a virtual session, right? But at the same time, those smaller classes, those labs, those those um, those course components that, that you're able to scale a little bit or already scaled, those are likely to continue. I think there's good opportunity for those to continue, but maybe in, in a larger space to allow some distancing. And I would not be surprised if, if everyone is uh, walking around with masks on. I think we, we've got to be prepared for those sort of things. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, for our chapters, I think we, we, we need to start with our chapters and our chapter leadership needs to start thinking about what are these things we need to be considering? How, how does this really change our recruitment? As we start to learn more, how do we still maintain those essential pieces and really continue those friendships maybe in, in a different environment? That's everything from recruitment to how we practice our ritual. So there, there's gonna be a lot that the International Fraternities is working to provide some guidance on as well. You know, and I think that's part of um, what Jake's gonna be talking about, you know, this summer is really, even if you even if your campus is back open there are going to be certain things that you're going to be doing differently in recruitment and we got to we got to think through that and plan for it and talk about it so that we're prepared when we get back you know if you if you can try to anticipate what's ahead you can plan for it and come up with some great ideas and also you know this as you're talking about how campuses are going to be we know we know the campus life is going to change no matter what happens and it just, it, it makes me, it just reminds me of how important getting, you know, people actually getting together is. I mean, yeah, we can go, we can do an online, edu have online education, but getting together is so important as er I think as everybody now is beginning to realize for this last two months, you know, human contact is so important. And that's one of the values of being on a college campus. Certainly one of the values of fraternity and sorority life is that, you know, we provide that that human side of of the educational equation within that context, and so it's just uh, it just reminds me how important what we do really, really is to yeah. college campuses. Yep. So, Absolutely. Um, some of the questions have there. We have two questions that are kind of very similar. Well, one is about recruitment, which I think you know, trying to answer the question, uh, Dole Smith from Colorado School of Mines asked about. He's concerned about recruitment in the fall. Uh, and he's he's IFC recruitment chair, so he, he's got his hands full. But I think um, I think talking a little bit about if we can even just trying to look ahead to try to offer some advice to to some uh, of our undergraduate brothers about that. Uh, any thoughts that you want to share? We're we gonna let we're gonna let Jake take that. One? No, well, I'll, I'll defer to Jake on the mechanics of how to do it, right? But <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna resist the urge to get on the soapbox here. Now is a perfect time to rethink what we think about in terms of recruitment, okay? Now is the perfect time to, to adjust our, our expectations. When we think about recruiting, we're, we're talking about getting to know people. And why is it that recruitment suddenly means you have to get together at these two, three, 400 person events to get to know somebody? That, that's one of the places you, you barely get to know somebody, right? I, I, th I mean, I, I think certainly it's one thing if you're in, if you're in a lockdown scenario, right? If you got stay at home orders, that, that is a little different than I think what we're expecting. I think by the fall, we, we are all expecting some level of, of 
personal contact, just probably not in those big group settings. So how do we adjust that? We go get to know people, right? We reach out and try and, and we make friends. And, and that is where we've got to shift the, the thinking fundamentally on some campuses. Some campuses rely on a highly structured recruitment that has uh, relates to everybody going from place to place to place to place. Well, we're not gonna be able to do that. We, we can't do it. And, and I think it, that, that needing that structure should not be an excuse uh, for, for not being able to do recruitment. Let's just let's be a little creative with it. Do we really think that our, our founders or our brothers any, anywhere before 1940 uh, went about recruitment in this way? And look how much we grew in that first period of our history. We have it in us. We can certainly do it. It's a matter of are we going to be willing to, to make some changes and actually for all of our brothers to exert the effort to go get to know somebody. That's, that's where it's going to be. And I think that's, that's really the basis uh, of, I think, where we're going to start teaching. I think it's, it's back to the basics of recruitment. It's back to the basics of getting to know one another um, and, and really making an effort. And I think, ultimately, that's one of those things where we're going to come out much stronger because we're, we're not going to be relying on these other processes to get us there. Yeah, I think there are two, there, and we'll move on after, after this, but I think there are two very important aspects of of, of fraternity recruitment. One is you got to remember that uh, the people that, that have people that are out there, they, they want to be a part of something. When they go to college, they want to go get an education, but they also want friendships. They want to be a part of something else. And so they, they also are going to be looking and trying to figure out how to do that. So if we can meet them even halfway, yeah. most people join Phi Gamma Delta because one or two people had a major impact on that recruitment process. Yeah. I mean, I, I know the people that were, that were important to me joining. And I think if I, if we all were to share, we'd say, yeah, there, there's just a handful of, of people that said, Hey, I want you to join and here's why. And so using that one-on-one, -on -one, get to know each other is still the greatest tool that we have in recruitment. I don't care if, I don't care if you're at the smallest chapter or the largest chapter, that's still a very powerful tool that, that cannot be replaced by any other mechanism. So again, I'm going to, every brother listening, think about it for a second. Why did you join Phi Gamma Delta? I'll tell you right now, Mike Dalton, right? Mike Dalton, Dan Chafin, Dale Adams, right? Mike Dalton was my RA. He introduced me to this whole fraternity thing. We became pretty good friends. Uh, Dan Chafin became a very good friend of mine as I got to know the fraternity even better. I distinctly remember sitting with those two and then ultimately Dale Adams been talking about this thing they call a bid, right? <laughs> so this, I mean, it's, it's getting back to those basics and we, we can do it. We can do it. We just, we've got to be willing to do it. That's yeah. the thing. Agree. Agree. Uh, Anthony Hevlin, I believe is for Akron. Uh, He's asking about field secretaries and what that might look like. Uh, but you're getting some, you're getting some tough questions. What the, <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what the field secretary program might, might look like for some of our chapters uh, and that kind of thing. Well, Anthony, hope, hope you're doing well. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I get to get to see you in April uh, for a big dinner. I think we have plans in October, if that's the memory, right? So hopefully we can do that. Um, we, we don't know yet you know, exactly how that plays out. So I, I think first and foremost, um, I think we anticipate shifting how the field series typically operate. I, I don't expect we're gonna have field series traveling campus to campus to campus to campus for what is the equivalent of about 30 weeks of a year in the coming academic year. I just, I don't see that happening. Um, as, as we think about how it works for a specific campus, uh, it, it, there might be some that we're not able to have somebody visit in person, right? That they just, that, that piece of building may not be there given um, local guidance, state orders, you name it. So I, I think we just need to acknowledge that that could be the case. Does that mean there's not going to be fraternity support or field support? Absolutely not. I think where, where we're going to end up, where we're going to shift, and this is where, where some of the staff is working right now to say, how do we make this adjustment? What we're likely to end up is, is the field studies are probably going to be working with chapters much more closely over a longer period of time, as opposed to having everything that happens on a visit happening while they're there for three days, right? So it very, it very well could be the scenario that instead of visiting twice a year uh, next year or once a semester, um, the target is more for once of it, once, once during sometime during the academic year. But those same field studies are working with the chapter officers much more frequently throughout, throughout the remainder of the year or the semester. I, I think that's more of where we're going, what we're going to see. I, I'm, I'm sorry if, the, if my staff is now angry at me for 
go in a direction they didn't want to go or, or haven't fully fleshed that out. But I think we're going to, we're going to have to see some flexibility uh, with that one as well. Yeah. Yeah. And only time's only time's going to tell, you know, when, when we're going to be able to make those, those kind of shifts. Um, you know, I, I, so much of our, or a lot of our operation is working with our undergraduates, but a lot of, a lot of the support that is given to our undergraduates are going to come from graduate brothers. So we've got, we've got a lot of volunteers that are, that are out there that do a lot of heavy lifting for Phi Gamma Delta and they're scattered all over the U S and Canada uh, for everybody from PLs, the BCA house corporation section chiefs, then just other brothers that brother brothers that don't even have a title. Right. But yet they're, they're attending pig dinners, they're going to graduate chapter functions, you know, all of that. They donate money, they, they advise us on particular issues where expertise is really needed. Uh, so let's talk, let's spend a little bit of time just talking about our graduates and kind of, uh, you know, giving them a big pat on the back for, the, for what they're doing. But also, I think some of the things that you're seeing, Rob, that, that uh, you may be spending time with our, our graduates uh, and, and during this period of time until we get to the summer or until we get to school. What are you seeing? What are some of the things you're talking about with our graduates? Uh, I mean, what we've been talking about with our graduates and primarily our, our key advisors, we about our Purple Legionnaires, our BCAs, and also our house corporations, right? Not, not in the advisory role, but in the other sense. Um, it, we, we've really been asking our advisors to over communicate, right? Uh, I, I think it's, it's almost the same as, as our guidance to chapters is let's keep this level of connection, but probably more so uh, for right now. Um, so I, it, a lot of it has been helping advisors and creating some new resources for advisors to understand how they can, how they can best uh, adjust and, and keep connected with it, with their cabinets, for example. Um, some of our graduate chapters have, have done a good job with staying connected with one another. You, I, I see a lot pop up in, in my social media feeds and my email uh, just with other, other kind of events we're, we're, that, that we're seeing just to stay connected with one another. And I think that, that's been the strong push for everybody is let's stay connected. I think going into the fall, I mean, there, there's some other considerations. Um, should every, every advisor, should every Purple Legionnaire, for example, uh, attend an in-person meeting if it's permitted to happen? That may not be the case, and we've got to recognize that. I think I, I want to be very, very clear that, I mean, for our advisors, this, this means some shifting as well, and especially if we've got brothers who, and I mean this with the utmost respect, who may be a little bit up, up there in age, or maybe with some underlying health conditions, we, we need you to take care of yourselves first. And so if that means stepping back from some of your traditional in-person roles, we need you, to, we need you to, to do that. But there are creative ways to stay connected with our brothers. And I think I would argue just um, emphasizes the point that we've been making now for some time, that technology allows us to stay engaged and stay connected with, with our undergraduates and uh, gives us the opportunity to be, to be involved wherever we are. So my, my hope ultimately is that, again, we think about what are the changes that we make that ultimately help us in the long run it, I hope this is one of them, right? I hope this is one of them that encourages brothers to, to understand and, and realize that you can have a tremendous impact on an undergraduate chapter, even if you're 500 miles away or a thousand miles away, right? Now, uh, to, to shift gears just a minute, um, what have we been seeing? I, I'm, I, I mentioned I'm, I'm very proud of our undergraduates. I'm very proud of our graduate brothers. I mean, we think about how brothers have stepped up and in the midst of what could be, we don't always know, but what could be um, very severe personal crises stepping up and, and, and advising, guiding, giving great leadership to our chapters. I'm going to make a, a little bit of a plug here, uh, but, but a, a few that I've seen. I, I want to give a big shout out to the Kansas State uh, advisors, particularly the House Corporation uh, with, with Dave Shrek at the helm and the Purple Legionnaire, Chris Hoopy. Those brothers have done an amazing job, an absolutely amazing job to keep that chapter uh, going the pace to handle some pretty complex housing scenarios and situations, doing it all with, with brotherhood and with grace, right? Yeah, I, I think that they've, while they didn't really want to be in that scenario to have to say, how do you handle a crisis? They've, they've done almost a, almost a model job of, of handling that crisis and navigating that well. And I think we, especially think about the complexities of dealing with the housing components of brothers moving out and dealing with the food service contracts and those things. That's particularly where our house corporations have stepped up. And I, I just want to say thank you for, for doing that. I, 
or how I've spoken with many, many, many high school preaching members over the last six weeks. Sure. And, um, and, and at no point have I said, wow, uh, someone, needs, someone else needs to step in. I, I've never had that feeling. I've, I've never thought that needs to happen. And most of the time, it's, it's just talking with them and realizing those brothers know what to do. They just want to make sure they're, they're doing right by, by the community. So thank you. Thank you, brothers, for all that you're doing there. Yeah, you know, our ha those brothers that uh, have been have been doing these roles sometimes for a long period of time. I was on a phone call with uh, a house corporation about a week or so ago, and as the brothers were rattling off their their class year and how long they'd been on the house corporation, I mean, some of them had been on the house corporation for twenty years, and so it's almost like well, they've seen everything, right? If you've yeah. if you've done that job for twenty years, you've seen it all, and are very capable of solving those problems. And, and some of those problems are, are, you know, some of them are tough trying to trying to figure out lost income, where that's going to come from. But yeah, you're right, Rob, just doing an amazing job. So a big pat on the big pat on the back to your brothers for, for that work. Um, I think really you know, and just just to, to go off that for one more second. I mean, uh, I, 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 I one thing I'm going to acknowledge you some, some other brothers that are doing, doing a lot of work during this time. I mean, I, uh, brothers, if, if you can imagine uh, being a board member of an organization like ours, when we're going through a, a, a once in a lifetime kind of pandemic, right? Uh, certainly the Archons have done a yeoman's work in, in helping to guide big decisions. I want to big, give a big shout out to our, our brothers on the 1848 Properties Group and the 1848 Housing Committee, as they've really stepped in to do significant work to better communicate with house corporations to get in front of these things. So I think while we have that opportunity, I, I need to say thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. You know, um, this, this is a big opera as Bill Zerman would always say, it's a big operation, right? And we've got a lot of people that help, help make it run. And we really appreciate them and what they're doing. Um, and as a reminder, we're still doing the, the fraternity match right now. So we've got a brother who has, uh, is going to be matching, I think it's $3,500 right yep. this year, this hour. Yep. So if you want to give, you're going to give to the fraternity, give to the fraternity. Um, there's a brother that's going to match that. So you can double your money. I don't want brothers to forget uh, to forget that. Uh, I'll, I I thought um, as we were talking, the other one of the other things just um, that I think might be important for us, Rob. Well, first I wanted to mention, you know, as we go into as we as things started to really stop last month, and now that we're through the month of April, we kind of are seeing a lot of the a lot of the challenges that may be out there. But I wanted to, I think it's important to communicate, you know, that the fraternity and the foundation both are in a good spot right now. You know, we're, uh, we're, <clears throat> we're being careful with our cash. We're trying to cut all costs that we just don't need to be spending. And anything that we can push off to later or just stop for a period of time, we're doing that um, with maintaining staff and that kind of thing. But, but you know, we have um, because brothers over time have been good to fight Gamma Delta, we've watched our operations. I mean, that's just <clears throat> important for brothers to understand. We've watched that operation. So we're in a place where, you know, we, we can get into the fall uh, and, and get some things done uh, with just minimal income. But, you know, but so today is important in the sense of just giving and kind of helping if you can. And again, again, it's not, it's not critical that, that that's not the whole point of today. But it is important, I think, for everybody to understand we're in a pretty good spot right now to, to get through the summer and to get into the fall. And I think it's important for brothers to understand that um, just because that we've, we've tried to run a good operation for years. And um, so I want to communicate that. Sure. Also, our undergraduates, you know, and well, actually not just our undergraduates, but our graduate brothers, because, because of this uh, pandemic has been, it was so fast in the, in, in, in the, in the, the blowback on it was so fast. Um, <clears throat> we just really want to check in on brothers' mental health, I think, you know, um, and, and we all know that it's a stressful time. It's a time when, you know, the things that were normal are, are no longer normal, and we have to do things differently, and you can't get out and about. But really, I think the message, and, you know, I had a chance to talk to several brothers, Jim Tooman being one of those who, you know, Jim has always been pushing, you know, for brothers to pick up the phone and talk to each other and, you know, just making sure you're touching base with each other. And so we thank him for what he's been doing, but just checking in on each other. One of the things that's important about today is checking in on each other, just to make sure that we're doing okay, you know, and that we, we know we got brothers out there that we can talk about and, and, uh, and lean on and, and, and you know what, and laugh 
and laugh appropriately about about the things that uh, are that's out there in life. So really, just encourage our undergraduates and our graduate brothers to you know check up on each other because that's real important. And whenever there's a, whenever there's a huge change that goes on in people's lives, and I think we're in that position right now, just a reminder that that's part of what brotherhood's all about. And uh, and it's okay if you if there are times when you just need help to say hey I need to talk to somebody it's perfectly all right and that they should we should encourage each other to reach out during this time to do that absolutely so, absolutely well Ben I think we got uh, about five more minutes so let's see how many more of these questions we can tackle okay <clears throat> oh expansions D uh, Dana was talking about expansions uh, maybe what's going to go on uh, with expansions and sure. uh, so you want to touch on that one. Uh, Dan, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I heard, heard good reviews from the, uh, the Virginia Tech Zoom Pig Dinner of the Weekend. So I, sorry I could not join. Um, I, I'm going to put the expansions in the same boat as the Ecclesia. We don't know yet. <laughs> I, and we, we want to uh, wait as long as we can so we can make the best decision that we can. So by that, I mean, there's just so much more information that's coming and coming and coming that we don't feel positioned yet to say we are definitively going to do this thing. Um, certainly, um, we just we, we might be in a position where some of the campuses were planning to go. Uh, we're not able to do it. We're, we're not able to because of, of the, the uh, restrictions that they need to put in place for the health of their, their communities. If that's the case, then that, that's the case. And uh, hopefully we can work with that campus to shift, shift our timing uh, to, to a better time. Uh, but we're, we're not all, all out canceling expansions. Uh, we're very much going case by case to evaluate what shifts we need to make if we can, if we can still do that uh, under, under that scenario. And uh, if not, uh, what, what are the options either to, to postpone, uh, well, ho hopefully to postpone and not to cancel. And looking at, um, so I, I, here's a great question. Um, okay. This is from Carson Heron, Appalachian State. Uh, new, he's a new, he says, I'm a new graduate. So congratulations, right. Carson. Um, so what, how, how do individual brothers, you know, how can they have an impact on the fraternity, either chapter specific or even, you know, widespread scale, the impact of, of individual brothers? What, uh, what are you thinking that uh, we can share with brothers about that? And I've got, I've got a few, but I know, I know, I know you have plenty uh, that we can talk about, but one or two things to share maybe. Well, I, I think I'll go back on, on some of my comments earlier. I think there's there's ways to be connected and stay involved no matter where you are. So, so Carson, for, first and foremost, I think that what I would encourage you to do is to look at look at two different scenarios. One, one is how can you still stay engaged with your with your chapter, right? Our our heart tends to be work with our home chapter, and that that is perfectly fine, right? And encouraged. So, you mentioned you're moving across the country. That that doesn't mean that you can't stay connected with your chapter. That just means that maybe you're not going to be there in person. So. What does that mean in terms of staying engaged with, with those, those officers, with those men, and, and ultimately even making a commitment to return when you can for big dinner and, and the like? I think how can you stay connected with them in terms of uh, reading, reading what they're putting out in terms of updates and newsletters and, and that sort of thing? But I think just being there as, as a voice and a graduate brother, uh, I think, is, is one of the most important things. The other is wherever you end up, wherever you move, you know, the, the hope is that there, there's a, a, a good opportunity to stay purple there. So I'd encourage you to, uh, wherever that location is, and, and you didn't mention it, feel free to reach out to us afterwards if, if you want some help identifying this. Uh, wherever you end up, I hope that you can, get, you can get plugged in with a local graduate chapter. That's a, a local graduate group based on geography, not, not uh, school affiliation. So be engaged with, with that group and how they're, uh, however they're operating at that point in time, and or uh, engaging with, with a local chapter much the same way you might with your own. Uh, trying to get involved as, a, as an advisor or just to, to attend, uh, attend some of the things they might have coming up, whether that be in person or via a platform like this, whatever, whatever the case may be. So Ben, I, I know you have some too before we, uh, we have to jet. Yeah, well, that, actually that was very similar as I think as, as nowadays, you don't have to be, you don't have to be present. You can, it, I think as you do this, the most important thing is developing those relationships so that when you're working remotely, the person or people that your brothers that you're working with already kind of know you. So that takes a little time remotely, but it'll, it'll get there because I think we all are having to go through that, you know, kind of go through that same experience. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I want to, before we, ha I know we've got to, we got to log off here, but I want to share this because I think it's important. <clears throat> Last month I had an opportunity to talk to a brother, a uh, graduate from class of, get this, 1940. Mm. 
George Irwin, yeah. Northwestern class of 1940. Yeah. He's 101 years old. And I asked, I, I got his permission to, to share his name and everything. Uh, George is down in Florida. He is doing real well and um, remembers uh, being, he, he, we were talking about his experience as an undergraduate and he was just talking about how pleasant the memories are of his undergraduate days in the Northwestern chapter. And the little, little piece of information is his father was a member of a local fraternity that lived in the same house as the Figam house at Northwestern. And so his wow. dad and George both lived in the same house. So George sends his hellos to everybody in Phi Gamma Delta at 101 years old and uh, is, is still, he still cherishes his experience. And I think that's, I think, you know, part of what we wanted to do today was just talk about where the fraternity was, how, yeah. how we're kind of managing through all this, knowing that things are going to change and, and, and shift around a little bit. But um, Rob, I'm going to leave the last word with you because I know we got to close out. Sure. You kind of close us out. And, and, uh, and again, brother, thanks for the day. Thanks for what you're doing. And uh, if you have questions, you can call the headquarters or email us and we can try to get information to you if you need it. Thank you. Go ahead, Rob. So Ben, I appreciate you. Uh, one, I appreciate the foundation taking the lead on organizing this day of brotherhood. So let's, let's give credit there as well. Appreciate you all doing that and helping us keep this, this brotherhood spirit alive. Um, I think, you know, my, my three points to make for everybody in the midst of, of our current uh, pandemic and just where we are today, um, our, the, our chapters and the fraternity can and, and will survive and thrive. Okay, we, we may need to, we will most certainly need to adapt in certain cases, uh, but we will survive and thrive and we're gonna come out of this thing stronger than we were. As, as you mentioned previously, Ben, the, the fortunate news today is the international fraternity is, is well positioned to weather the storm. So as, as, even as we have all this going on, I mean, we're, we're gonna be doing everything we can to, to be conservative and to uh, do our, 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 uh, food, uh, our duty, just, just to make sure we, we continue as long as we can under whatever circumstance, but we're still here to support our men. We're still, still here to support our fraternity, our chapters, and uh, we're, we're, still gonna, we're still gonna be there flying the purple flag, right? The Phi Gamma Delta spirit, will we'll continue, right? The fighting out the spirit is, is not one of, of being in, in, in social events and that sort of thing. The fighting out the spirit is those, those friendships, those connections. That is ultimately the foundation of everything that we do. And as long as we keep that in mind, we will get through any situation that comes before us. Brothers, happy Founders Day. Thank you for joining us. We we'll hope to see you at uh, events later on throughout the day. More at phygam.org slash brotherhood. Take care, brothers.